Left to fend for himself after the death of his parents, everything changed when the beautiful maid asked him to employ her. How will their complicated relationship evolve the longer they stay in the same mansion? The maid was hardworking and proper. However, he can't help but be suspicious of her actions. He found it suspicious that a fancy maid such as her would come and work in a tiny mansion. There was even one time that he caught her in the study seemingly muttering curses, or something that she read from a suspicious-looking book. He also thought that her purple eyes were purposefully drawing him in. When she asked him if he was curious about her, he instantly accused her of reading his mind. He even told her that he was so curious about her that he can't sleep at night. The maid only told him that she would make him herbal tea so that he can sleep better. As she was serving him herbal tea in the study, he could not help but wonder why her every move was suspicious. He was even more unnerved by the fact that she doesn't say much, so he doesn't know what she was thinking. Why did he even hire her? When his parent died in a car accident, he had to dismiss his servants. He did not inherit much, so he could no longer support a large household. He was determined to make it on his own. As the master of his mansion, he was going to survive alone. However, it was not as easy as he thought. He tried cooking his own food, but ended up burning it. He did his own laundry, but he added too much detergent. He tried cleaning with a vacuum cleaner, but it ended up as a disaster as well. The arrival of the mysterious maid in the middle of the night changed everything. He first told her that he couldn't possibly hire her since he was not wealthy and had just dismissed his servants. However, she told him that he didn't have to pay her as long as she could be a live-in maid. When she looked him in the eyes, he felt mesmerized by her purple orbs that he gave in to her request. Thinking about how he hired her, he couldn't help but think that he should have said no. The food she cooked was the best he'd ever tasted. The house was always sparkling clean, his clothes smelled so nice when she washed them. He felt like he was under a spell. He only grew more suspicious of the mysterious maid. He accused her of being a sorcerer since there was no other explanation for how good she was as a maid. To his surprise, she actually told him that he figured her out. She was actually playing along with him, stating that she was indeed a sorcerer. She jokingly admitted that she used her eyes to bewitch him. She was taken aback when he insisted that he was right all along, even mentioning how he saw her reading a magic book and chanting spells. He talked about how her eyes sparkled and sent his heart racing. The maid became flustered upon hearing this from her young master. She hurriedly excused herself, telling him that she was going shopping. She was merely joking, and the book was actually about housekeeping. She hadn't expected him to take it seriously. Iori was determined to know her goal in coming to his mansion, so he decided to confront her while she was hanging the sheets in the backyard. He asked her what she was plotting. However, she merely grinned at him, which only made him more furious. He demanded why she was smiling. She told him that he was cute when he watched her. He became even more furious, saying that he doesn't smile like that when he thinks she was cute. No matter how cute the maid is, he will not be fooled. He pressed her further to tell him her intentions. She only told him that she can't tell him yet. Morning came, and the maid made him yet another delicious breakfast. He was so grateful for them, and he enjoyed his food tremendously. However, he remembered a dream he had of her being a witch. Ever a distrusting boy, he accused her of putting something in his food— he even exclaimed that he saw her the night before doing something in the kitchen. The maid once again decided to tease him and told him that she did, in fact, add a love potion to his food. The boy instantly saw this as the reason why he was feeling the way he did for the maid. He believed that it was the explanation as to why he couldn't stop staring at her and why his heart raced when their eyes met. The poor maid, however, did no such thing. The reason she was in the kitchen in the middle of the night was that she was just studying cooking. He innocently made her swear to not use love potions anymore. Later on, when she called him by his name, he told her that she made it sound like they were married. She was confused as to why he thought this way. He told her that his parents used to call each other by name and that they were madly in love. Embarrassed, the maid excused herself to go shop once again. Determined to get even with her, he looked for her name as well since apparently he still didn't know her name. He found her resume and learned that she was called Lilith. He deemed her name suspicious as well, but was satisfied that he knew something about her. However, dinner came and she called him Young Master once again. He was surprised and asked her why she didn't call him by his name. She asked him if he wanted her to say his name more often. When he agreed, she told him that it would mean they were becoming close. However, he refuted this, saying that calling each other's names doesn't make them close. He doesn't know anything about her. 
Lilith is crestfallen by this, but her expression changes to a flustered one when he tells her that she should tell him more about herself. Even though the young master doesn't trust her, knowing one another can change that eventually, right? After preparing the young master's food, Lilith woke him up from his slumber. She bought Yuri new clothes and told him his breakfast was ready. Even though he was already used to living with her already, there was still something so suspicious about her. While he was enjoying the delicious food that was served to him, there was a person at the door. Lilith volunteered to get the door. When she came back, she brought with her a box of the latest game console. Upon seeing it, he got so excited. When she asked him if he liked it, he realized that it was her that bought them. He recalled the new clothes that he had suddenly had, and he panicked, not understanding why she was suddenly giving him all manner of things. He questioned her because his mind was brimming with suspicion. Before she could respond properly, he accused her of trying to control him with gifts. Lushing, she once again played along with his theories and told him that he was correct. She was indeed trying to tame him so he could be hers. He swore that she could never tame him. He then stated that she didn't have to bait him with things to show that she was attractive. He even went as far as telling her that it was him who will make her his. After a while, the young master was doing schoolwork in his study. However, Lilith kept on interrupting him by constantly offering her services. She gave him pastries and tea, and she asked if he was stuck in his lessons, or if he wanted her to sharpen his pencil. He became so annoyed by her interruptions that he shouted at her to shut up since she was interfering with his studies. She instantly apologized and explained that she just wanted to be useful. Yuri told her since she was going to distract him anyway, she might as well stay with him while he studied. After a while, Lilith told him that she would leave for a moment. When she didn't immediately come back, he became suspicious. He decided to look for her. When he found her going to the backyard, he thought that she was scheming something. Turned out she was just playing with a stray cat. When she noticed him looking at her, she invited him to pet the cat as well. He said he would. She decided to tease him by saying that he only wanted her to pet him instead. Embarrassed, he told her that she was afraid of cats. He even confessed that even though he admired how beautiful she was while petting the cat, he could not do the same since he fears them. She offered to help him overcome his fear of cats, however. He insisted he could do it himself. When she left him alone with the cat, he did what he could to bond with it. It was difficult to get the cat to come near him. After a while, Lilith came back with food for the cat and asked him to feed it. The cat was enjoying his bowl of fish when another stray cat decided to come over. The first cat defended him from it. When he realized this, he decided to defend the cat as well. By the time Lilith returned again, he was able to bond with the cat already. Yuri was drawing the morning glory when Lilith came to tell him that lunch was ready. When he was served his food, he relished how delicious her cooking was once again. He figured that there must have been some secret to how she cooked, so he asked her to teach him how to cook. That was how they ended up in the kitchen, wherein she showed him the basics of cooking from cutting the vegetables to making his favorite stew. All throughout the cooking process, he didn't see her put anything in the food. He took a first bite from the stew that he made, and yet it didn't taste the same to him. She told him that it was more delicious than ever. He asked her if she forgot to add a secret ingredient. She mischievously told him that the secret ingredient was the love she had for him. The young master was amazed as to how she was able to have so much love all the time since her food was always delicious. The house was always spotless, and his clothes were always in perfect shape. Lilith's face grew more flushed as she listened to her young master. Later that night, she found the drawing Yuri made earlier that day. It said that the flowers bloomed and that they were a pretty color, like Lilith's eyes. When the young master was fast asleep, she snuck into his room to watch him sleep, like she always did. It was time for Yuri to go back to school. Lilith was fussing over him and asked him if he was sure that he didn't want her to see him out. He only insisted that she watch the house for him. Before he got out of the house, she made sure that his necktie was not loose. His hair was... When she noticed that he was just looking at her, she teased him that he was so charmed by her that he didn't want to go to school. He responded that they were like a married couple, since his mom did those things to his dad as well. This only made the maid flustered, but the red face she reminded him that he will be late for school. The young lady Tsukasa arrived at school, and she caught a glimpse of Yuri. She's heard from her butler, Fujisaki, 
that his parents passed away. She remembered how he talked to her back then, even though she was timid and quiet. It made her happy back then when he spoke to her. She now wanted to help him. She only had to be brave to speak to him. Meanwhile, Lilith was wondering why her young master was so resistant. She thought that he did not believe in her capabilities as a maid. She became more determined to work hard so that he would finally accept her. She went on her way to pick up Yuri. She knew that he would be upset with her, but she was his maid. It was part of her job to welcome him home. Yuri decided that he could get home on his own. He was about to do so when he saw Lilith was there to pick him up. He indeed became upset because of this. He told her many times already that she should not go to his school. Tsukasa, on the other hand, saw him and was about to call his attention. However, she saw him approach a maid. She hid behind a tree as Yuri started scolding his maid. She was shocked when she heard them talking about a special relationship between them and that Yuri doesn't want her to go there since everyone would see how beautiful she was. She started speculating that they were probably in a forbidden romance. She was so excited by the idea and so invested in their possible relationship that she did not notice that Fujisaki was already standing behind her until she called her name. She tried to explain why she kept the car waiting, but Fujisaki noticed the presence of Yuri and Lilith. It turned out that Lilith and Fujisaki knew each other. There was a day wherein Yuri came home, but Lilith was not there. At first he was elated since he had got the house to himself. He spent time reading and eating junk food while relaxing on the couch. Lilith was in fact in town to buy ingredients for the young master's dinner. However, the main ingredient was not in the local market no matter how many stalls she went to. She decided not to give up and went to another town just to buy it. Meanwhile, Yuri started noticing that it was getting late, yet Lilith was still not home. He wondered where she was and why she did not contact him that she was going to be home late. He started noticing how quiet it was and when she was not around. Worry had become evident on the young master's face. He wondered why she hadn't at least left a note for him. He tried calling her only to find out that she left her phone there. Lilith, on the other hand, was able to buy the ingredients she needed. However, it was getting late and there were delays due to train car inspections. She started getting worried knowing that she left her phone in the mansion and she couldn't contact Yuri. At that moment, Fujisaki, who was there to buy Lady Tsukasa's mangas, spotted her. She offered her a ride home. When she arrived, she found his slumped form sitting on the couch. She apologized frantically for being late and for not being able to contact him. When the young master finally lifted his head, he accused her of casting a spell on him. He stated that he became sad when she was not around. He insisted that that must be the explanation, because back then he was fine even though he was alone. Now he felt lonely when he was not with her. The teary-eyed Yuri exclaimed that she must have cursed him since he couldn't live without her. He then made her swear to not go missing without telling him any more. Lilith was aware that her young master watched her closely. She didn't know why it came to this. She wanted him to grow up healthy, both physically and emotionally. Her concern for his welfare is why she came to the mansion in the first place. Yet he was still so suspicious of her. She understood why, of course. She did just barge into his life without any warning. She didn't want to be a negative influence on him, so she intended to be closer to him. She started following him around the mansion, intending to watch over him as much as she could. Yuri, paranoid as ever, thought she was looking for his weakness. He ran away from her while she followed him. However, she tripped and ended up falling on top of him. When he got up, he told her that he won't run away anymore and that he will not let her go either. Nevertheless, the young master continued to be more suspicious of her. He looked at her with a frown while she was sweeping the floor. She decided that she would be more grown-up and maid-like to redeem herself. She confronted him and asked him why he doesn't get bored watching her so much. He only exclaimed that she was suspicious and was diverting him from his insidious plan. He even said that he would not grow bored from watching her, since he could watch her for his whole life. She was becoming sad, since every attempt she made to be closer to him had failed. He was still suspicious of her. She was in her room, despairing due to how hard it was to be close to her young master. She had to find a way. She decided to go on with another plan. She invited him to play with her. She told him that they would have fun, just the two of them. They played chess. She learned that it was the one game his father had taught him. He explained that his parents were kind people. They were always working. He sadly recalled the times of the past wherein he was still able to spend time with his mom and dad. Lilith stood up determined, stating that she was there to play with him whenever he liked from then on. 
They ended up playing chess until night came, and he kept insisting that they play another round. Lilith noticed something off with the young master's behavior one day when he came back from school. He was quiet and went straight to his room. Since he was a bit down, she decided to make him pudding for snacks. She imagined that he would react like he usually did, accusing her of scheming something just because she served him pudding. However, despite her effort in making the pudding, she had not received the reaction she was expecting. When she came to his door to offer the dessert, he merely thanked her and went back inside. She was shocked by this. For the first time, her master was not suspicious of her. She followed him around, expecting that he would call her out and accuse her of scheming again. But he only went into his room again. She started worrying. Did he not see her there? Was he ignoring her? Did he lose interest in her? All this and more questions are running through her mind. Suddenly, her master came out from his room with a paper in hand, and she panicked. She feared that it was a dismissal notice. However, it turned out to be a paper about an open house day where parents and guardians go to the children's school. A reluctant and embarrassed Yuri told her that he had hoped she would come. She felt relieved about hearing this. She gladly agreed with his request. However, her master wanted her to wear normal clothes to his school, rather than her usual maid's outfits, since the parents and teachers in his school were strict. She had to look for clothes in her wardrobe that would be appropriate but her clothes did not fit with her master's orders. This made her despair as she had to find a way. At school, Yuri watched as the other parents and guardians arrived. He looked for the familiar face of Lilith. However, she wasn't there. Crestfallen, he convinced himself that he didn't have to come at all, and that is fine on his own. But she did arrive together with Fujisaki. Turned out she had to borrow clothes from Fujisaki so she could wear something appropriate to her master's school. Yuri was elated upon seeing her. On their way home, he expressed his gratitude to her and told her how happy she made him for being there. Yuri spent his time running up and down the halls of his mansion. When Lilith asked why he was darting back and forth, he told her that he was practicing for the sports day. The halls were perfect for the race. She told him that she would help him practice by cheering for him. When she did, she noticed that her master was not practicing. When she asked him why, he told her that she was so cute that he couldn't stop staring. He then asked her to come to the sports day to support him. She instantly agreed. After school one day, the young master was enjoying the snacks Lilith made for him. He told her how amazing she was for making the delicious snacks by hand. He saw that she was holding a book. When he asked her about it, she showed it to him. It was a special sports day training plan. She wanted to help him train for the sports day. He was so happy to hear this. Not only would she come to support him, but she would also take the time to help him train as well. He thanked her sincerely, and so they trained for the various events. After all the training, he started complaining about how tired he was. Lilith told him that she would give him a massage so that his weariness would not affect him the next morning. As she was massaging his sore leg, he told her how amazing she was. He never knew that she could give massages like that. He became suspicious again, claiming that she was using magic. She only told him that she knew how to make him feel good. He exclaimed that it was unfair and demanded she tell him how to make her feel good. Lilith only flushed upon hearing her master's words. Yuri woke up earlier than he usually did. He got ready earlier and was now walking the halls when he saw that the kitchen door was already ajar and the light was flooding out from it. He saw that she was already working. He realized that she was always up early. He saw that she was already preparing his lunch for the sports day. He greatly appreciated her efforts. Later on, she bid him farewell when he was about to head to school. Before running off, he told her to dress comfortably for the sports day. The sports day started, and the first game was tug of war. However, some of his teammates called Yuri poor and told him not to drag them down. But rather than backing down, he challenged them not to do the same. Tsukasa, who witnessed the whole exchange, was amazed at how competitive Yuri had become. At that point, she heard the maid cheer for her master. She realized that he became so fiercely competitive because of her, she decided to root for him even more. She approached him, telling him that they should work as a team and do their best. They managed to win in the tug of war. Yuri told Tsukasa later that he just wanted to win so he could see Lilith smile. She watched how the maid approached Yuri. She praised him for winning and stated how amazing he was. He obviously appreciated her compliments. She was so moved by how beautiful they are together that she got Fujisaki worried. The four of them ended up having lunch together. Tsukasa and Yuri enjoyed the food Lilith prepared. 
After Tsukasa expressed just what an amazing maid Lilith was, Yuri suddenly became quiet. The maid asked her master what was wrong and he asked her in return if she was inconvenienced that she had to go to both the open house and the sports day, as well as having to wake up early to make him lunch. However, she reassured him that she was happy to do so. Later on, she found out that the parents and guardians were going to have an obstacle race. She was reminded of her parents. Her mom was a track runner, and her father was awesome as well. She was worried because even though she was happy that her master depended on her, she was afraid that she would make a mistake. She started wondering what her master thought of her. However, when the race started, she decided that she was just a hired maid. She wanted to assist her young master in growing up healthy. She realized when she won the race that this was the reason why he asked her to dress comfortably. He was looking out for her. When he came to tell her how amazing she was that she won, she told him that she did her best for him. However, a bunch of other kids told them that it was unfair of him to use his maid when the race was supposed to be for parents and guardians. But he defended her. He told them that she was his family. She was so moved by his words that she blushed. She thanked him for what he had said, but she asked him if he was sure about what he said. He assured her strongly that she was more than a maid. He told her that when she was happy, he was happy as well. To her amusement, he accused her of controlling the way he feels. She was once again deemed suspicious. Lilith was buying some ingredients for supper. She was now at the cabbage section and chose the most scrumptious yet affordable one she could get while thinking of what to cook for dinner. She was up for cream chicken and cabbage soup when thunder showed up among the dark and heavy clouds. Back at the mansion, Yuri was enjoying his books when the thunder growled. He noticed the pouring rain from the window and worried about Lilith, who was not home yet. Right off the bat, Lilith announced from the main door that she was home. He ran as quickly from the study to the door to check on her. Lilith and the stuff she bought were drenched from the rain. He immediately took some towels from the room and gave them to her to dry off. He commanded her to take a bath or else she would catch a cold. Even in the face of her serious and worried young master, she was still able to tease him and made herself sound suspicious and mysterious about her intentions and thoughts about him. She invited him to take a bath with her, which only got him flustered. He told her that she was not allowed to be so impatient and can only do it after their marriage. Surprised by what she heard, her face turned red, flattered by what he had in mind for them. The next morning, she went to the study to offer the cup of coffee she prepared for the young master. Yuri choked on his coffee due to its excessive saltiness. Lilith mistook the salt for sugar. He was suspicious of her and followed her through her daily chores when he noticed a book falling on her face. Lilith's nose bled while he panicked, not knowing what to do. She tried to just wipe the blood off and continue cleaning when he stopped her and checked her forehead. She was burning hot due to a fever and was pushed to a room by Yuri out of real worry, trying to stand up and continue working. She cried because she feared that she might be taken away from her young master because of her weakness and illness, especially if he called the doctors for help. He reassured Lilith that he would not replace her with anyone, nor let her leave his side. She rested up for the night and went back to her chores in the morning. While doing her chores, she promised to give more efficiency in her work to make up for her absence last night. Yuri appeared beside her, wiping the windows to help with the chores. She was taken aback by his actions and felt like she'd been keeping him tired and working because of getting sick. She tried to stop him, but he told her he wanted to help, and it was also another way to spend more time with her. She was moved by his words, and they continued cleaning the mansion together. After the chores were completed, Yuri was choosing his Halloween costume for Tsukasa's Halloween party that they were invited to. He finally decided to play as a sage and let Lilith choose the color of the gem to be placed. They went over Lilith's costume next, who was excited to dress up for a party too. As soon as they arrived at Tsukasa's mansion, Yuri was wearing his sage costume while Lilith took on an effort to wear a dragon costume. Tsukasa screamed and shouted in adoration for the two of them romanticizing their bond as a couple, but both were flustered by such affection as observed by the butler, Fujisaki. They entered the mansion and into a room full of maids, treats, and Halloween decorations that speaks of how rich Tsukasa's family is and how blessed the mansion is with numerous people to take care of them. Tsukasa dressed up as a hero, Yuri as a sage, and Lilith as a dragon. Tsukasa thought there was something missing, and it was a princess ready to be saved by the hero. The maids took Fujisaki and turned her into a beautiful princess with soft features. They all took pictures of the party and finally bid their farewells as the day ended. 
After school the next day, Tsukasa found Yuri heading home. She called out to let him wait for her, and she passed him an envelope with their pictures. He saw a photo of Lilith and him smiling while eating their sweets. This made him more eager to go home to be welcomed by Lilith. As soon as he arrived, he opened the door without notice and saw Lilith with a sad and startled expression. He saw her quickly hide something and confronted her about it out of worry and curiosity. He felt like what he said earlier about her being less suspicious these days was not true, given the fact she was hiding something from him. He was eating his dinner worried because the food was unusually bland and Lilith had been awfully silent. Lilith broke her silence and let him remember the first time he tasted her food. He was rather suspicious while tasting it and was surprised by how good it turned out to be. She smiled sadly and said that it was the last time he was going to see her because she received a message to come back to her assigned master. Yuri was infuriated and confused by this. He tried to talk her out of it. He told her that promise to stay until he could find out who she truly was and the mystery of her identity. She cried and crumpled the letter. She threw it as she bet her life on staying with her young master. The setting is at the school in Yuri's classroom during their class. They were tasked to color the graphs creatively when Tsukasa noticed that Yuri only colored the whole graph purple. Yuri sat on a bench outside the classroom and contemplated silently. Tsukasa noticed him and asked if he was feeling down about the assignment they had earlier. He replied that his maid is the only thing he keeps on thinking about every day in school and he feels kind of troubled about it. Tsukasa blushed just at the thought of him thinking about a girl. He continued expressing his thoughts by saying that the moment he lays eyes on Lilith, his heart races. Tsukasa concluded that what he feels is love. She asked him what was really troubling him, and among everything he spouted about Lilith's delicious cooking and how he feels sad if Lilith is sad, he arrived at a hypothesis that he was sick. Tsukasa was dumbfounded by his conclusions and explanations, frustrated by what he cannot grasp. Upon heading home, he kept asking himself what love was. He was welcomed by Lilith at the front door, and he usually blushed at her pickup lines. However, this time, he passed her by with a deep thought in his mind. Lilith tried to warm him up the second time, but he ignored her. For the third time, she tried again, and felt like she went overboard, but his reaction was still blank, and the same. She asked him if there was something that was bothering him. He tried to speak up, but failed. The next day after school, Yuri asked Tsukasa for some advice on what he was feeling. Tsukasa was moved by his willingness to understand his feelings, and offered to discuss more about his feelings at her place, and to show him what love was. She introduced him to her mother, and she welcomed him wholeheartedly. Lilith made him bring financiers for Tsukasa, which she loved eating. Tsukasa asked him if they could invite Lilith to their tea party, but at some point, Yuri got scared of the possibility that Lilith might leave him and serve Tsukasa's mansion instead. However, Tsukasa reassured him that she thinks Lilith looked very happy being with him, and she thinks their bond is strong. His thought was that if Lilith was to work for Tsukasa's family, she would earn more money and be happier. He felt so little and questioned if he could even make Lilith happy. When he felt better by Tsukasa's of romantic books to let him understand the feeling better through the context of books. When he arrived home, Lilith welcomed him in from the front door. He stood there and faced her for a while. She was confused about him staring when suddenly, Yuri blushed at the thought of Lilith being happy by his side. Later the next day, their homeroom teacher tasked them to draw a piece that could show the true nature of something or someone. He was determined to draw Lilith to accomplish his assignment, while also attempting to complete his goal of showing her true nature. He was able to draw her for the very first time, but as soon as he showed it to Lilith, he seemed uncontented with his work and decided to draw back to square one. Lilith complimented his first work, but he said it did not portray her sensuality, beauty, and style. He did his best multiple times but failed to satisfy himself and lost sleep by reason of thinking about her all day. She tried to tuck him into sleep, made him drink milk and listen to healing music, but it all failed until she suggested to sleep with him. He woke up feeling all energetic and said he slept well last night. Lilith asked if he remembered something, and he replied that he had a dream of his mother singing that lullaby Lilith used to sing him to sleep. The day after... He was invested in drawing her best picture and told her to sleep with him again today, because it was the only method that effectively made him sleep. Not long after, he finally completed the drawing and showed it to his class on time. He expressed in front of the class his admiration and thankfulness to Lilith for being an important member of his family. Moreover, Yuri won an award in the drawing competition at his school. 
Yuri dreamt of a girl with purple hair while he made her a flower ring. He went closer to her, almost seeing who she was when he heard Lilith's voice. He heard her saying to wake up as it was already morning. He opened his eyes and the girl was gone. Lilith's sweet expression and face replaced her as if they were the same person. He wondered why she was still working when today was her scheduled day off. She reasoned that she should be responsible for the morning duties despite her day off. After breakfast, she went on her way to change clothes for her day off, while Yuri stayed in his study to read some books and entertain himself with assignments. Lilith entered his study to inform him that she would be going out on her day off. At the sight of her, Yuri's pencil fell on the ground, stunned by her beauty in her maroon-colored dress. He realized that she might be scheduled date with someone today. He feared such an idea. When Lilith asked him once again if it was fine with him to let her take the day off, he said it was a part of his duty as a master to give personal time to his servants. So she went and waited for someone she was going to meet. She smelled something good while waiting, so she decided to follow the scent, and it led her to a bakery. Pastries, sweets, and the breads that the young master enjoyed were there, and she wanted to buy them for him. While heading towards her destination, she saw two young kids with almost the same age gap as she had with Yuri, running and having fun. When she finally arrived at the cafe, she kept worrying about Yuri at home, about his meals, his activities, and things that might trouble him. She set the thought aside when Fujisaki came and sat down in front of her. The waitress made them order first before they discussed the important matter they were there for today. They began conversing and were on the topic of Lilith's never-ending worry for her young master. She then returned the topic back to Fujisaki and asked if she had ever worried about Tsukasa. Fujisaki denied that she did not worry at all. When in fact Lilith envied her bond with Tsukasa, which seemed deeper than what she had with Yuri, she opened up that she did not yet feel able to open her heart fully and felt anxious about it. Lilith's face brightened as she realized something. Fujisaki had changed so much from being the rumored worst student at their maid school to a loving and responsible caretaker to Tsukasa. Fujisaki felt embarrassed and returned the compliment. She let Lilith realize how well her relationship is with her young master, when back in their old school days, she was very unapproachable. Suddenly, she received a text from Tsukasa, who was ecstatic to find out about their talk and about what Lilith shared with Fujisaki. Meanwhile, Yuri had been secretly following Lilith, paranoid about who she was with. He noticed a mother and child close by. The mother sang her son a lullaby to sleep. This moment woke something in Yuri's mind and heart. He went back home before Lilith arrived and waited for her at the front door. She went inside with many goods for him. He directly confronted her about the talk. He told her that he had been following her today because he feared her leaving him and wanted to know about her past. He then told her about the girl his parents brought home and asked Lilith if she was that girl all along. She nodded and he complained about her secrecy on this important topic. She thought he might hate her if she brought it up to him again. She decided to open her heart to him. The next day she saw him in the garden already awake. She went closer and he gave her a flower ring like how he did when they were younger. After school, he had an encounter with Tsukasa, who was so eager to learn about his love progress with his maid, and because she was pleading to know about them, he just said they slept together. When he realized all along Lilith was also so anxious about so many things, he knew what he loved Lilith and everything she did. Suddenly, an orange-haired maid told Lilith to return to the previous mansion, where she was assigned in the first place. They went inside the mansion with Nakashima Natsumi, who was Lilith's former classmate in maid school and a former worker at the previous mansion she was working in. They provided her tea and asked the reason for her sudden appearance to the household. Natsumi said she has needed Lilith to come back to the previous mansion right away. And when Lilith asked her what her opinion was if she refused to go back, Natsume said that it's not a good decision given that she works for a child with nothing to pay her. Yuri cut her off and said no. He spoke as if he owned Lilith and said that she was his maid. It turned into a plea to not take Lilith away from him. Natsume told him that Lilith was better placed in the care of her master than Yuri for her sake. Yet Lilith refused all over again. No matter how many letters Natsume would send her, it wouldn't change her mind. Natsumi decided to stay and observe Lilith's hard and heavy labor in this small mansion before she arrived at a decision. She tested Yuri if he was qualified as a master starting with education. She asked him about the theory of relativity. Yuri is still studying financial management, so Yuri showed his piggy bank filled with his allowance. He wanted to use it to give Lilith a gift in the future. 
Yuri's consideration and told Lilith that she was being manipulated by Yuri through words. Lilith stopped her from saying insults to her young master, and because of Natsumi's haywire, the lamp on the table fell and broke. Yuri was sincerely worried and checked to see if she was hurt, and asked Lilith to go get the broom to clean the broken pieces. After which, Yuri innocently said that Natsume loves Lilith for putting such effort into coming here to bring her back for her own good. He felt embarrassed but still confessed to Lilith his love for her. The next day, Yuri went to school and informed both of the maids that he was going. They were left at the home as Lilith started to do her chores. The eagerness to clean and do chores was high at this time for Lilith. She swept the floor, wiped the windows, and told Natsume to stop giving her a hand as she is treated as a guest. When Lilith was done with the chores, she decided to rest and have some tea with Natsume. However, she realized that it was already time for Yuri to arrive from school. She went to the front door prepared to welcome him. As Yuri entered the house, he was sweating excessively and said he had run home eager to see Lilith. He expressed his love for her and told her that he had been thinking of her all day. Lilith and Natsume felt so embarrassed of his vulgar confession as a kid to an adult. Natsume remembered how tender her master was to her when she was younger, and saw herself less brave than Yuri for not expressing herself. Natsume was quite troubled when Lilith looked at and asked about it. She shrugged it off and said nothing and walked away. When Yuri went back to them after changing his clothes, he asked Natsume if she was truly a maid since she wasn't good at chores. She felt insulted and recklessly pulled the pail of water trying to prove her skills, but she ended up falling and splashing Lilith and herself. Yuri was worried about their condition and suggested they take a bath before catching a cold. Lilith invited Natsume to take a bath with, and she was flustered but did not refuse the offer. While taking a bath, the two of them talked heart to heart. Lilith apologized for being harsh on Natsume and told her that she believed her love was true and pure. However, she wanted Natsume to understand and respect her will. She was quite happy with Natsume's presence as it lifted off the heavy load she was carrying, especially on how she would respond to the affection her young master showed her. Because of Natsume's presence, Yuri had been less suspicious of her actions and trusted her more. Natsume said that she thinks that what heavy feelings Lilith is carrying is the surging happiness of knowing that the master adores her, and this plastered a flushed and flattered expression on Lilith's face. Natsume thought more about the young master's personality and her thoughts led her to understand why Lilith is absolutely firm with her stay in this mansion, despite the trouble she may encounter. On a bright day in the mansion, Lilith looked for Natsume in room where she usually stayed. When she entered the room, no one was there, only Natsume's empty bag of chips and an empty glass of juice. She baked her some cookies to enjoy, and wondered where she went off to. Before leaving, Lilith saw an open magazine on the table. It was on a particular page with a Christmas gift, and she thought, giggling, perhaps Natsume had someone special for Christmas. She smiled out of relief and joy. Natsume, on the other hand, walked out of the mansion to head off to Yuri's school. It was a normal chilly day for Yuri in school, while Tsukasa kept on bugging him about his relationship with Lilith or what had been happening between the two of them. She giggled with romantic ideas in mind for them both and asked Yuri again about their relationship. Yuri thought deeply and said another family member was added to the mansion. Tsukasa's soul left her body because she thought about an unborn child, but luckily, it wasn't really what she expected. While walking out of the campus, Yuri talked about Natsume's stay in the mansion and how her presence made the house livelier. Natsume saw him nearing where she was standing. She thought Tsukasa was someone Yuri was cheating with despite confessing his love for Lilith. This infuriated her but the feeling easily went away when she saw Fujisaki, who took Tsukasa away for her piano lessons. Yuri and Natsume walked back home and Natsume discussed her plans about giving Lilith a Christmas gift. This sounded good to Yuri to express their gratitude and love for Lilith. However, when she asked him if he had information on what Lilith wanted, he also did not have any clue. While walking back home and arguing, Yuri was intentionally bumped by two male strangers, and they asked him to pay for the buns that had fallen on the ground. Yuri talked back and said they were the ones at fault. This triggered their frustrations, and soon they attempted to attack him, but Natsume was able to stop them before the hit landed on Yuri. She casted them away through her charisma and complimented Yuri for standing up. She also reminded him to keep himself away from trouble as it will worry Lilith, and he agreed. As soon as they got home, they entered a room to discuss their plans secretly. They wanted to hold a Christmas party to celebrate with Lilith, 
They conversed more on how they could conduct the preparations and how the surprise would Yuri went to school the next day, while Natsumi troubled herself with what Lilith would want to receive this Christmas. Yuri saw Tsukasa and told her about his plans and holding a Christmas party for Lilith. Because she is an ever-supportive romantic, she instantly said yes to helping him in achieving such an endeavor for the future couple. She offered again to discuss the details in her mansion. They went and the preparations were now completed. The only thing that was left to do was to keep Lilith away from the mansion while they decorated and made the preparations for the party. So later that night while Yuri was eating his dinner, Natsume started the topic of celebrating Christmas. Lilith smiled at the idea and asked Yuri about his plans. He replied that he wouldn't be celebrating Christmas with them as he had been invited to a Christmas party by Tsukasa. Natsume then asked Lilith if she could spend Christmas with her and she agreed with glee. Slightly disappointed by such news from Yuri, Lilith agreed to his plans and felt responsible to give him a gift at least. During sleeping hours, she lit her candle and tried to finish the crocheted scarf that she intended to give to him. However, Yuri caught her doing so and went in to tell her something. On Christmas Day, Natsumi and Lilith were about to leave to celebrate outside the mansion. However, Lilith worried that Yuri might get lost upon going to Tsukasa's mansion alone. He assured her that he wouldn't get lost, and the plan to keep her out of the house went smoothly. Right on time, Fujisaki and Tsukasa arrived to start preparing. Tsukasa complained about why she was the one assigned to make the decorations, while Yuri and Fujisaki were busy frosting the cake and cooking the meals for the night. At the kitchen, Yuri asked if the frosting was good enough when Fujisaki wiped away some frosting on his nose. She said that she had gotten used to doing such things to Tsukasa, and that it's not complicated. Yuri told her he blushed at the compliment and contemplated on how she changed when Tsukasa came into her life. Not long after, Tsukasa was already taking pictures of the two, but Fujisaki confiscated them. Tsukasa complained about not being with them while preparing, so Fujisaki asked her to put strawberries on the cake. Meanwhile, Natsume was feeling nervous and anxious trying to distract Lilith. Lilith asked her if there was something wrong, but she got flustered and stumbled when she tried to buy them crepes. They sat down on a bench as she wiped away the blood on her nose. Lilith broke their silence and apologized for coming with her when she might have other plans with someone else. Natsume got more flustered about the misunderstanding and explained her side. When everything was made clear, they enjoyed the food outside and celebrated Christmas together. Upon heading home, Lilith bought Natsume cute ribbon hair clips as a Christmas gift, and Natsume handed Lilith her gift. When she opened the box, she saw a cute pen. Natsumi wanted to let her respond to her letters using this pen, and it made Lilith genuinely happy. When they were finally at the front door of the mansion, everything was dark. Suddenly the lights went on, and Natsume was awed by its beauty. When she turned her head to tell Lilith to come inside with her for the surprise, she was gone. Natsume saw the brightness inside the mansion and was curious. She went inside and was the one who got surprised by the others. Lilith explained that Yuri told her the truth about the surprise when he saw her knitting in the room last night, as he couldn't lie to her and decided to surprise Natsume instead. She fell on her knees, gratified and immensely happy about the surprise. The celebration happened, and all of them, including Tsukasa and Fujisaki, enjoyed the food and the merriment. Lilith had cleared up all the mess and clutter from the Christmas party. She turned the place into a sparkling home for her young master. The hall gleamed with sophistication as Lilith hovered her eyes around to check everything. It was all thanks to the young master and Natsumi's help that made the task quicker and easier to finish. With glee, she had the idea to prepare some tea before the young master came home from shopping. A sleek black car stopped in front of the mansion's gate. A man in a pale green suit walked to the door and rang the doorbell. Lilith was preparing dinner when she heard the bell. She went to the door and was stunned at the sight of her previous master. She let him in and spoke with him. Down the street, on their way back home to the mansion, Natsume complained about the weight of the groceries she carried while Yuri walked with her. A while later, she broke their silence and gave him thanks for allowing her to express her feelings and affection to Lilith after being apart. Now she was willing to go back and express her love to her master. Confused, Yuri asked her why she loved Lilith and her master at the same time. Natsumi explained the different types of love a person can feel for different people, and maybe soon enough he could understand it too. After which, they hurried home to bring Lilith the things she needed in the mansion and have supper together.
Back at the mansion, Lilith gave her old master a cup of freshly made tea. He began to ask her about her life in the mansion. With a closed-ended answer, she sincerely apologized for leaving him and his mansion behind. The calm old master questioned her on her leave having something to do with her past. She then explained that at the time her parents died, she lost her home and was passed from one relative to the next. When she had nowhere to go, Yuri's parents gave her hope and a home to stay in and feel safe. She said that her stay in their abode was partially because of their gratitude to her parents and mainly because they did not want to abandon her. And like his parents, Yuri saw beauty in her eyes. At the right age, she decided to enroll in a boarding maid school to give back to them when she graduated. But when she was finally close to her goal and was assigned in the care of her old master, she heard the news that Yuri's parents died in an accident. All she could think of was to be there for Yuri because she saw herself in him when she felt like she did not belong anywhere and had nowhere to go. This story struck a note with her old master and made him understand her intentions. When their discussion was almost ending, Yuri and together. Natsumi saw her master and her face turned red at the sight of him. She knew he was there to fetch her. Lilith introduced her old master to Yuri, who was threatened that he might take her away from him. The old master laughed at Yuri's gesture and assured him that he wasn't going to take Lilith away. And he had Natsumi prepare for them to leave. He thanked Lilith for taking care of Natsumi and bid farewell. Lilith also thanked her old master for understanding, and he smiled, looked at Yuri, and asked him to take care of Lilith too. As soon as the old master and Natsumi left, they both ate dinner. But it was quite awkward given the long time that they were with Natsumi for every interaction. Eventually, Lilith asked Yuri if he wanted to go out with her, and he considered it a date. The cold and shivery day after, they went out. While walking, Yuri complimented Lilith's dress and how she looked good in it. Her face was painted red. She tried to control her feelings and offered him to have some hot cocoa in a cafe. They talked about a lot of things, and as he stared at her, he gathered up the strength to go somewhere special. They both went to his parents' grave. Yuri felt bad for not visiting them sooner. The reason being, he didn't have the strength to go see their graves alone. He introduced Lilith to them, and before leaving, she softly spoke and expressed her gratitude to them, and that they did not need to worry about Yuri, because she would be there to take care of him. As they left, the central block of the city was filled with lights that shone brightly in the skies, and the snow was about to fall. He was mesmerized by her beauty, and stared for quite longer than expected. She noticed him and was flustered by his gesture, and asked him why he was staring. He said she looked so beautiful enjoying the lights. Yuri faced her and said, I love you, Lilith. Every moment I spend with you makes me happy. Lilith blushed ruby red when she heard this unexpected confession. She asked him what type of love he felt for her and that she may not be able to respond to his love right away. She reassured him that along the way of him understanding and knowing what kind of love he felt for her, she would be right beside him. They both promised to continue loving each other and they went home as the snow began to fall. If you'd like more anime series recaps like this one, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks guys, until next time.